Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the feature race at Del Mar on Friday. Race number six is the Daisy Cutter Handicap. Five-eighths of a mile on the turf. These are fillies and mares and some pretty quick ones at that. Let's take a peek at this field. It's a nice matchup between two quality horses. The five legs galore, the seven twilight gleaming. These fillies have done some very good things on the turf. The latter winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint at Del Mar last year. Yeah, two uh, you know pretty talented turf sprinters uh, going to match up in this in this race. And they both have the same running style too, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Both the five and the seven want to use their speed um, in races like this, so they might hook up. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. You're absolutely right about their running style. Legs galore, the five. Twilight gleaming, the seven. They both have speed. Legs galore is going to be cutting back to five for the first time in a long time. Twilight gleaming, you could argue, as maybe a little bit of a better outside post position because it gives the jockey some options. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Um, you know, we'll see if if Legs Galore's speed's been dulled at all because she's been, you know, mostly concentrating and races going a little bit longer for the last year or so, Dan. But, man, she's so fast. I, I find it hard to believe that she's going to get outrun early in this race. Royal Address, the number one, was a stakes winner going five-eighths of a mile in France in 2020. Uh, she's been competing mostly in down-the-hill turf events at Santa Anita. She's coming off a little bit of a layoff, about two months, beaten by legs galore last time out, went third in the misdirection. Five-eighths, at first I thought would be a bit sharp, but this pace could heat up for her. Yeah, she could fall into a really good trip here from the rail. I didn't, you know, love her most recent start back at the end of May there when legs galore beat her. You know, I guess she finished an okay third. I, I didn't really know what to do with her, Dan. I was a fan of hers when she got over here. Um, I remember really liking her when they brought her to Belmont last September in that race. And, and she ran fine in there. She was, you know, only second best to Too Sexy, who then came back and, and won a stakes race with a 97 buyer. So maybe she had enough of an excuse there. I don't know. I, I had a tough time talking myself into her, but I do think she could win this race. Xmas surprise, the number two, I thought looked good, winning two starts back. It was a first-level allowance race. I was able to get out in the stretch and really come with a strong run. I think you'd make the argument the last time out she was pace compromised in a race where she's so nice, got comfortable up front. Yeah, that's how I looked at it for sure. Uh, this really just rated the break in there, sat back off it, got herself between horses and unable to improve there for a while and ran on okay through the stretch. I Like you, I liked her win two starts back where she had a little bit of a better setup. Um, there was some trouble on the turn in there, but she managed to avoid it and then came with a pretty good finish in that race. I don't mind her cutting back to five in here, and I think she's going to have something to run at. The number three, Sadie Bluegrass, is just a cool mare. She's won 13 of 22 lifetimes. She's been on the board in 19 of those starts, and she's entering this race sharp with first place finishes in four of her last five races, including this effort at Golden Gate Fields going five-eighths on the turf. And this was a race where it's only a 12,500 starter allowance. She's one to 10, and she wins like it. She got close up to the pace, and she won. I don't think we're supposed to you know, handicap her off of this race. She looked good two starts back coming from out of it against stakes competition. And she's likely going to revert to those tactics here. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, she wins this race for fun um, as just much the best horse of the race, but two back, she also ran really well in there. She got a great trip in that race, but she also really fired through between horses through the stretch um, to earn that 89 buyer. She's a player in here. Let's take a look at the number four. She's so nice. Her most recent victory. This is that second level allowance we were talking about where she got to the lead, raided the pace, first quarter mile, 22 and three, and she's able to sprint on home as the favorite. Yeah, just sort of took advantage in this race, didn't she? I mean, it's not like her prior races weren't that good. Um, and they were, you know, she started out over here with a different running style, but in her last two starts, they've used her speed. Um, that's not going to work in here. So they're going to have to try it a different way in this race. And I don't know. I just don't see the race that she's run that, you know, makes her a, a real big contender in this spot. Fans of She's So Nice will at least note that she has come from off the pace in the past. It's unlikely she'll get a similar setup as last time. Legs galore, the number five, won three consecutive races, including the Buena Vista going a mile, and they really tested her last time out in the Just a Game. Don't be so hard for her on that race. Not only did she run against subsequent graded stakes winners, Wakanaka, and an Italian who won the prestigious Diana at Saratoga, she just got caught up on a very hot pace, uh, pushed by an Italian all the way around. This is a much better spot. It definitely is. They, you know, they took their shot and they just a game last time and they did not. I, I appreciate the fact that they didn't try to change up her tactics. They went in there. They knew that that pace was going to be fast. They tried it. It didn't work out. Now they're going to cut her all the way back. 
again, we'll see if that affects her at all. But she's just so fast from the gate. I doubt it's going to have, you know, a big effect on this horse. We'll just see how much pressure she takes from Twilight Gleaming. The number six Havana Love seeks her first victory since 2020 when she was campaigning in Italy. We'll watch her most recent race, an allowance race going down the hill at Santa Anita. She didn't seem to care for the down the hill configuration. She broke well. She raided off this long shot, Ellie Arroway, didn't take the dirt patch very well and then didn't finish. Not a great race, to be honest with you. Only an even performance. I just don't think she liked going down the hill. They're going to do a lot of different things with her here. Blinkers on and cut her all the way back, and I think hope for a blazing pace and make one run yeah i think those things are all true i'm with you i didn't love this performance but maybe you know just going down the hill didn't really suit this fairly two starts back she didn't run terribly i don't think it's the kind of you know effort where you would say ah oh, you can't take her over um she's so nice um, this horse ran fine in there she didn't make the lead she never lost any position through the stretch she just held her ground but she couldn't gain into a slow pace that performance was not bad and Twilight Gleaming, the number seven, returns to Del Mar for the first time since beating the boys in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. She's run bang-up races in her two starts this year for trainer Wesley Ward. Went gate to wire last time out in the Mamzelle. And again, her speed always makes her dangerous. She'll be right in the thick of things when they turn for home. Yeah, I mean, she hasn't run that fast race yet, but she just shows up every single time. And I like both of her starts this year. She couldn't hang on against the boys off the layoff at Keeneland, but she ran well that day. And I know that that most recent one at a really short price wasn't the most impressive win in the world, but she stumbled, you know, sort of awkwardly from the gate in there, then still made the lead. She was always holding on there at the end. I don't know. I think she's pretty good. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Daisy Cutter Handicap. It's the feature race at Del Mar on Friday. And again, I respect the seven. I respect the five. Those horses are very classy. I just have a feeling that this pace might heat up. And I'd like a price coming from out of it. Havana Love, a little bit of an equipment change. I thought the race two back was okay. I think she comes late. And I think you feel the same way about the two. Yeah, that's that's why I took the two. I, I'm with you on the two favorites in here. I don't really have big knocks on them, and they're probably just the two best horses. But um, if I'm going to bet the race, I'm not betting either of them. I got to bet somebody else. I'll try uh, this horse. Uh, you know, trying to rally from out of. I really liked her win two starts back. See if Christmas surprise the two gets it done from off the pace. Havana Love's going to be a price. Should be a nice edition of the Daisy Cutter Handicap at Del Mar on Friday. Good luck.